high. Today, as you can see, we're not quite out in nature as I would normally try to take you. Uh, I've got a bit of a cold and it's a bit cold outside, so I decided that I would stay in the warm. And I thought, but I really, really, really want to like include the lake or a lake or something into this Tresena of Imosh. And so I thought, well, why not bring the lake here to me if I can't be there? And uh, then I thought, well, why not have some other pictures in there? So I'm going to be taking you through a series of images. I'm not going to talk about the images. I'm going to be talking about the Tresena. But uh, I've picked a bunch of images from the Gregorian year so far. And this Tresena that we're talking about, the Tresena of Imosh that we're going into, can be seen as you know the, the, the new dream that we're bringing in, the new visualization that we're bringing in. And I kind of like, as I was compiling these images, I realized this could be sort of like, some of them might make sense with what's going on, what I'm talking about. Others might make no sense whatsoever. And I thought, well, isn't that just like Imosh? Isn't that just like this jumbled kind of like idea of what a dream is like? And we can't always make sense of it while it's going on. Or maybe there's elements that make sense and then other bits just don't seem to fit in. And that's the dream. So I figured, well, you know, I just want to put some pretty pictures up in the background. This is better than a white wall. Maybe you'll enjoy them. And get on with talking about the Tresena of Imosh. So we're going to begin the Tresena of Imosh with the day one Imosh. Imosh, of course, representing the oceans and the lakes, representing the seas, representing the great bodies of water. And I always think it's interesting because right at the, bo uh, the beginning of the Popol Vuh, they talk about all that existed being the sea under the sky. There was nothing but the sea. There was nothing but water. And, you know, we can see this as kind of like the moment before the Big Bang. We can see this as kind of like the dream of the ancestors. We can see this as uh, maybe even the great, like, sea of consciousness that everything emerged from. And everything was stillness and everything was potential. Everything was there, but it needed some action put into it to make things move, to make things happen. And this can often be how it is when we have a new dream. And so as we begin the Tresena of Imosh on this day one Imosh, we get this understanding, we get this feeling of, right, okay, we just kind of completed a cycle. We've done, you know, we're sort of ticked off a level as it were. What should we do now? What new dream do you want to bring in? And for me, this can be very much what the Imosh Tresena and the day one Imosh. It's the seed of a dream, the very beginning of an idea that you maybe want to bring in. And so, you know, you could ask yourself, well, like if I was to have a dream, if I was to begin a dream, what dream would I like to start to seed into reality today? Now, maybe you need some advice on it because the one, it's just like a little seed. It needs some water. It needs some fertilizer. It needs some sunlight. It needs to be able to grow. And so, you know, it might also be saying, right, okay, what, where do I need help to bring my dreams into reality? One in March is a great day to kind of like nurture those first little embers of the dream to come in. From one Imosh, we're then going to move to two Ich. I figured that was an appropriate one for Ich. Ich, the Nawal of the wind. Ich, the Nawal of communication. Now, interestingly enough, you know, when, again, going back to the Popol Vuh, going back to, you know, kind of the creation story, you had Hunrakan, the heart of the sky. And some of the other creators begin speaking. And it's this that then causes the water to ripple and life to emerge into the world. And so we see the breath of life being um, applied 
to the great ocean. The communication comes in. We, you know, we're literally breathing life into the dream at that moment. And so there's also this thing that's kind of like, if we see one in Mosh as being like the unity and two Ich being very much the duality, and the two being dualistic and the, the Ich bringing movement and creating this polarity. And when we see those two together, it's like, right, okay, twos can be very much choosing days. And so it's like when we look at it, we might be saying, right, choose your words, okay? Be clear with it. And we could say, right, okay, if we wanted to bring something into reality, we do need to be clear with our words. We need to know what we're saying. Do you want that or do you want that? State clearly which dream, which choice, which decision it is that you want to make so that you can bring it in. We can also see that the um, ik can represent changes, and it's like the two is giving us a kind of like we're we standing this side or that side on it. Which way do we want to go? It's up to us to choose. From two ik, we're then going to move into three achabal. So achabal, the dusk and the dawn. Achabal, the first twilight. And here, with the number three, representing the inner world, bringing this from within. Now, I often think about achabal being you know, kind of like revealing what has been hidden in the darkness. And sometimes, you know, kind of like we could look at it as like bringing to light, and especially with the three, bringing to light what has been hidden within us, what we're keeping inside in that own kind of like, well, I don't want to say dark space because that might give it the wrong, give you the wrong impression about it. But, you know, what we're hiding away within ourselves Achabal is the one who comes and says, right, okay, it's time to bring it out into the light. So it's not ready yet. It's not finished yet. It's something which is a new concept. It's something which is, a, you know, kind of like this just beginning in this Tresena of Imosh. But this is kind of like the, the revealing of what the concepts that we're holding inside, the new ideas that we want to like bring out into the world in this new dream. Three, Akhbal, maybe a great day to kind of like let the world have a little look, just open up a little bit and see what's in there, see how it can be developed. From three, Akhbal, we're then going to four, Cat. So Cat, the Nawal of the net. Cat, the Nawal of binding. The Nawal which helps us to understand what we need to gather what we need to release now as we go through our cycles of course we pick some stuff up but we can't carry everything we can't hold everything together so there has to come a point where we need to let some things go as well and here we see that with regards to the physical plane of existence number four and so with four cat this is a great day to look at it and say, right, okay, you're beginning a new dream right now. In this Tresena, you're bring, beginning to bring something completely new into the world. What resources do you need to carry with you? And what might you be carrying with you that is slowing you down or taking you further away from that dream rather than taking you closer to it? Four Cat is a great day for decluttering particularly on the physical level. So, you know, if there's something you need to do <clears throat> in your apartment, in your house or wherever it might be, it's like, right, okay, it's a great day to go through your cupboards and see what has, you know, what's ready to let go, what you're ready to pass on to somebody else, to make space for what you need in order to bring your new dream into existence. You know, one of the things that I always like to, remember as well about the day of cat is that it's a great day to be making an offering to give thanks for our liberty because cat you know can represent also binding it can represent prison and so you know when we when we have a cat day come around and here in particular with the with the four 
it feels very much like uh, making an offering to give thanks for our physical liberty, our ability to move freely and without restriction. From four cat, we then move into five can. So, can the Nawal of the serpent, can the Nawal of the um, wisdom of the power. Sorry, I giggled because it's like I realized that I put an oscillated turkey on there. Um, doesn't really have much to do with snakes, does it? Although this was at El Mirador and that is the kingdom of Can, which is what I was trying to kind of like work with. So Can, the wisdom, the power, the energy that runs through us. And here we see it with the number five. Now Can can also represent our teachers and, you know, kind of like passing wisdom on in order to empower others. And here, when we see it with the number five, this is suggesting putting some energy in it. And so it's like, sort of like, I always think with the five, it's kind of like, you know, this is very much a, you know, you don't get, um, you don't get something for nothing. You have to put in something in order to get something out. Now, when five puts in their energy, they generally tend to get quite a lot out of it. And here we might say, well, this is putting your energy into study, putting your energy into passing on your wisdom, putting your energy into clearing out your energetic system to make sure that your, let's say, your energy is open and ready to receive the wisdom. Now, I can also see can as representing kind of like the life spark energy, the life force energy. And here, when we see it with the number five, this is kind of like saying, right, okay, this is a good day to put your work into developing and clearing your channels, clearing your life force energy. Make sure that you are ready to kind of like, make sure you're ready to grow, really. From five can, we then move into six kame. So, kame, the Noel of the ancestors, the Noel of transformation. Kame, as we go through, again, we're going to need some advice. And here, we could see the number six representing family. We could see kame representing ancestors. So there's a very, very strong connection with the ancestors and with the family. Um, Kame, we can also see as representing overcoming our fears because, you know, kind of like this is, you know, the, the descent into the underworld by the hero twins to meet the Lord's Kame, where they overcome their fears in order to transform, in order to move into their higher state. And so, Six Kame may well be, you know, like a day where we, you know, we're coming up against our fears, particularly ones which are associated with our families. Now, with these Kame days, these are days on which we can call on our ancestors to help us to overcome the fears. And so this is something to, to do. With Kame... We're also kind of like looking at the potential of what we can become. We're looking at the potential of what we're moving to. And so with six came, the six being the stabilizer, asking for the help from the heart of the sky and the heart of the earth to bring this transformation into the physical realm to help us to kind of like step up on the ladder. From six Kame, we're then going into seven Kech. So Kech, the Nawal of the wilderness. Kech, the Nawal of the deer. Nawal of spiritual leadership as well. And here with the number seven, the number seven representing the top of the pyramid, the number seven representing choices. Again, decisions. From the top of the pyramid, you can see all of your best choices. Which way will you go? Which way will you go in the wilderness? This is a question 
that you might want to ask and you know kind of like as you bring in that dream sometimes it is a bit like you know feeling like you're in the wilderness right and so with seven kirch we see you know kind of like this effectively in our mind's eye we see the deer standing on top of the pyramid making the choice making the decision as to which way to go which way to move We also see that it's coming to an end. The number seven representing finality. The number seven representing endings. And it's saying, right, okay, where is your wilderness journey taking you? What can you draw from the wilderness? It's up to you to choose what you might. But choose what you will from the wilderness to guide you in your new dream. And so... As always, on the day seven kech, as always with a kech day, I would suggest if, if, you know, if you're trying to make a decision as to which way to go, in particular with regards to you know, this new dream that you might be bringing in, then a walk in the woods, a walk in the mountains would be an ideal thing to be doing. From seven kech, we're then moving into eight anil. Oh, we can't see that one very well, can we? There we go. Let's move on to that one. <coughs> Excuse me. We're moving into Eik Anil. So Eik Anil, very much a celebration of the harvest. Anil days, all about the yellowing, all about the ripening, the abundance that comes from the fields, the abundance that comes from the farms, the abundance that fills our table. And here with the number eight, now the number eight we can see as one and seven coming together. We can see it as the whole cycle, the planting and the seeding, the uh, the you know the planting and the reaping, as it were. And so, when we have that together, this is you know kind of like our ceremonial day. And I would say you know kind of like what is the ceremony to celebrate is to celebrate the ripening to celebrate the harvest to celebrate the abundance that comes from the fields now whether we are growing corn in guatemala or, or whatever we're growing anywhere is always a i always think that it's a great thing to do to to celebrate the fact that we've got food on our tables and the fact that you know things are growing for us and you know, those kind of things. And so to make a ceremony to give thanks for a full belly, to make a ceremony to give thanks for all that you reap from your garden, for a full table, that's a great idea for a anil. Now we also see that this can represent the completion of a cycle. It's like the wholeness of the ripening. And so it's not just about you know, kind of like what you have achieved through your garden, what you've achieved through, you know, the field it can also be about what you've achieved in your work, what you have brought to a ripeness. So a ceremony to give thanks to that would be a good idea. From eight and nil, we then move to nine toch. So toch the Nawal of the sacred fire, toch, the Nawal of offering, <coughs> of giving, excuse me. As I said, I've got a little bit of a cold at the moment. Toch, the one where we're going to make our offering to give thanks. Uh, again, you know, kind of like we've gone from eight and nil where we're, you know, we're completing the cycle of maturity. We're giving thanks for all that has matured and all that has ripened. And then we have nine toch. Well, toch to, you know, to make offering, to make fire. And here with the number nine, representing the women, also representing life itself. So nine toch can be a great day to make offerings, to give thanks to the women in our lives. It is a day on which the women may well make their offerings on behalf of the lives that they bring into the world. It is also a day on which we might make offerings for our lives themselves, to give thanks for all that comes into our life, all that sustains us, all that helps us, for our strength, for our health. So, nine toch 
is a great day for you know kind of like a life reflection and again a ceremony to make an offering show your gratitude say thank you for what you receive in life and i'll put up as usual at the bottom of the screen i'll put up the um various organizations where you can make an offering should you wish to um to show your gratitude for life from nine toch we're then moving into 10 c so c in a world of faith and loyalty and justice and law. And here, combined with the number 10, representing the hands coming together, representing community, representing harmony. Now, with Z, there is definitely something with regards to protection. There is definitely something to do with the guidance. There is definitely something to do with authority and law. And Z is the one who is guiding us by the hand to our new dream. Z is the one who is kind of like sometimes setting out the natural laws of the place and helping us to navigate, helping us through. Now, as we go through, you know, we realize that we can't necessarily do it alone. We need to do it hand in hand. And here, when we see it with 10 Z, it's like, right, okay, how can we forge, you know, kind of like, I was going to say forge allegiances, forge alliances, you know, build our community together. Now, I also see C E as representing love and trust, loyalty. And when we see that combined with the number 10, it's like, okay, this is about bringing, like, the essence of, community together bringing harmony to the community through our faith through our loyalty through our trust of each other bonding with each other okay now there is also we can see c connected with the law and there is something with regards to the laws of society that come in on the 10 c and this is something that you know kind of like however we feel about the societies that we live in you know, there are laws that, let's say, we make up within our communities, within each other, the way that we treat each other, the way that we are treated. These are our own laws, laws of our own communities, and it's a great day to be focusing on that, you know, to get together with your community, to reaffirm your loyalty and your trust in each other, and reaffirm how your laws work with each other. So, from 10 C, we're then going into 11 bats. Bats, the Noel of the creation. Bats, the Noel of weaving, creativity. Bats, the one who is bringing things together. Now, the thing with bats, the thing with 11, is that the number 11, you know, it's kind of going around all over the place. It's going around in many, many different ways. And here, when we see it with bats, this is kind of like bringing in the creativity from many different angles. I like to say with 11 bats, it's like so much creativity and so little time. It's like, I want to do this, I want to do that. I feel like painting, drawing, singing, writing, whatever it might be. It's kind of like all on the same day. we like, how can we fit it all in? And there is a certain thing with the 11s. I often feel it's about, okay, you got to follow your intuition in one particular direction at a time and say, right, okay, right now I'm going to focus on that. Now I'm going to focus on this. Now I'm going to focus on that. And not necessarily be too attached to completing any single one of those projects, tasks, or artistic things that you're bringing in. It's more about understanding kind of like, how a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this, we're making the masterpiece together, okay? So that's kind of what I see with that 11 bat. So allow your intuition to guide you and to guide your creativity um, and see what comes at the end of the day rather than judging it halfway along to, you know, kind of like see what's, you know, it might not make sense to you as you're going along. You'll wait until the end of the day before you really 
understand it. From 11 bats, we're then going to 12 er. Er, the Noel of the road, of the path. Er, the Noel of the journey. Er is the one who takes us on the road, takes us on the path, takes us to different places. Brings us different experiences. Now, we use those experiences to help to guide us further forwards on the path, of course. And, you know, what we see here is when we've got the Ech combined with the number 12, the number 12 literally representing bundling together of all of life's experiences. And so, you know, kind of like, this is right, okay, this is helping us to map out our path ahead in this day, in this time, in this Tresena, as we are manifesting, seeding this new dream into the world. 12 Ech is the day to make a roadmap of how we're going to take it forwards. We're using our past experience to help us to understand how to move forwards into the future, how to make a roadmap. Okay, and of course, you know, this is going to help us to understand how to overcome problems. It's going to help us to understand, you know, which way to go. How did we deal with that last time? Oh, when we got to that fork in the road, did we turn left? Did we turn right? Which, what did it bring us? 12 Ech is a good day for that. And it's a good day for, you know, kind of like wrapping up any transport, as it were. Any journeys that you might have to be taking. And then finally, from 12 Ech, we're going into 13 Ech. Let's see what comes up for 13 Ech. Oh, there we go. Huh. Okay. Bali. Um, Ach. The Noel of house and home. Ach, the Noel of the spinal column, of leadership. Ach, also seen to be the Noel of corn and sometimes called reed as well, interestingly enough. Ach is the one who leads. For me, Ach is all about the authority and the authority that comes with holding the staff, holding the baston, okay? Now, that baston of authority shows that we are where we deserve to be. We've been handed our baston of authority in order to lead our community and do what we need to do. Now, here we see Ach combined with the number 13, representing the spirit world, representing the ancestors. So, you know, one of the things that we see with that is leadership with the authority of the ancestors is one way that it comes in. Now, I also see Ach as the one who stands up tall to say the right thing, what needs to be done to bring harmony into our world, what needs to be done to bring harmony into our community. And for me, when we see it with the number 13, this is suggesting kind of like, you know, kind of like your spine being strengthened by the ancestors to make you stand up straight and tall and do what needs to be done within your community in order to bring peace and harmony. Okay, so that, you know, kind of like for me, a big focus of the 13 Ach day is to tune into the ancestors and ask them maybe for the strength that we might need in order to, you know, kind of like bring in that harmony. Also, you know, kind of like with Ach representing the home, it's kind of like it's recognizing the essence of the ancestors in your home, recognizing the spirit of your home. Okay. So, I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, Tresena video, and I look forward to seeing you again in 13 days' time for the Tresena of Ish. Thank you.